So today I have to talk about another patron request. This was another uh, you know self-published thing on the Kindle store requested by Evan Stegall. So thanks, Evan. Uh, also, it was 90 degrees yesterday, and it is currently snowing outside. So I I don't know if that has anything to do with what I'm about to talk about, but it is weird. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. So today's book is called Galactic Entente, and man, I have weird feelings on this, because, look, they, they pay me to be honest in my reviews, and this one, I will come right out and say it's not good, I didn't like it, but I can see, yeah, there's some uh, aspects to it that if you just tweaked it a little, it could be really cool, and there's some aspects where you just need to expand on it and it would be a lot better. So the plot here is... I'm not 100% sure what the plot is, because it goes in a couple of different directions, and then I, it's also told in such a weird way that I had difficulty telling what was going on, and it's interspersed with a couple of author's notes, almost like a fan fiction. so all I can say for certain is that it starts off with people getting onto a spaceship, which is, you know, all outfitted for battle and everything, and then while they're flying, they get attacked by pirates, and then there's a big battle with that. And after that, there was just a sequence of events. Like, there there was someone got murdered, I believe, and there was some sort of competition with the main character Hans, or the closest thing to a main character that Hans is. And I, I feel kind of bad for not knowing what's going on, but I genuinely could not tell what was going on for large chunks of this, and... Part of that is just because it's written in a very strange way. So part of it seems almost like a movie script. Like, this is supposed to be um, one of ten books or something, and this one it starts off with, like, scene one and the name of the scene, and then it'll have characters do things, and then scene two and that. Um, and at first I thought it was going to be... the dialogue and everything was going to be written that way too, but not really. Like, the dialogue doesn't have any quotes around it, it doesn't have tags, so I can't really tell who's saying what a lot of the time, and a lot of the characters don't have much description, like, one or two of them have some, but not much. The biggest thing that made it difficult to read, and I feel bad hating on this because it's a really cool idea, is that whenever certain characters were talking, or uh, when it was describing their actions, it would the text would change font and it would also change color. So like, you know, the average text is just, I, I, I don't remember exactly, it was like regular Times New Roman or something, and it's just, you know, regular black text like you would see in anything. But then when certain characters talk, it'll get into this like uh, cursive and it'll be bright pink. And I think that's really cool. And then there's others where it's like highlighted and it's blue, and there's others where it's highlighted in black and then the letters are like these really thin squiggly red lines and I think that's really a neat idea because it does give a visual element to it and if you did it properly it would help to distinguish between characters but my god it was difficult to read like you you need to pick fonts that y you can actually read because the the um, pink squiggly cursive for example I had to stop and really look at that to see what was going on and uh, the one that was highlighted with black boxes and had red squiggly lines in it, I could not fucking read that to save my life. Like, every, like, fifth or sixth word I could make out, but a lot of it, I genuinely just could not read it, no matter how I tried. And it's not like I could highlight it and it would look different or anything, it looks exactly the same. So, there was a lot of bits in this that, even though, again, I think that's a cool idea, uh, adding the visual element to it and taking advantage of the fact that, you know, if it was a printed book, you probably wouldn't be able to do all the different colors because that'd be a lot more expensive. But uh, just when it's on a screen, yeah, you can do that, no problem. So I think you're taking advantage of uh, the format that you're using, which is a neat idea, and the visual aspect of it is just neat. But you gotta go back to the drawing board. You gotta make sure that people can actually tell what's going on and can actually read it, because this was just kind of a mess. In addition, there are just a lot of typos and grammatical errors and uh, parts where I'm pretty sure that uh, the characters 
or a different character was talking and so their text should have been in a different color or something. Um, and there's parts where characters have conversations and rather than, in addition to not having quotes around the dialogue, rather than having uh, a different paragraph for each person talking, it'll have one person talking in this color and then right next to it another person in this color and then back to the other one. So it, it took me a while to even figure out that yes, that, that it is dialogue. And so you know, it really is just a mess, and this needed at least one or two more rewrites. And that's part of why I couldn't tell what was going on with the story, but another part of it is just that a lot of stuff is never really explained. They just kind of put characters out there, and then they start doing stuff, but we don't know exactly what it is they're doing or why. And at a few points, we figure it out, but... And I'm sure it made perfect sense to the person writing it. I'm, I'm certain it did, but... This is why you have other people read it, and not just your friends or your mom or someone, because they're gonna, you know, they're they're gonna tell you, yeah, it's good, uh, most likely. But you know, get some strangers and beta readers and editors and stuff like that, because they they will be honest with you. They will come right out and say, yeah, this is, I I have no idea what's going on here. You should go back to the drawing board. When it comes to positives, I will say that the battle against the pirates, while it does take up like a third of this book, and um kind of comes out of nowhere. We don't know exactly why people are fighting. Well, I mean, we know, you know, they're pirates. They just attack stuff and steal things, but we don't know exactly who they are. We don't know quite who the good guys are. I will say that it is kind of cool. You know, if it had been written a little in less of a confusing way, I think I would have liked it a lot because, you know, I just, I just like space battles. I don't see them often enough. Uh, and I will say that there's a lot of detail about the, the ship they're on and how it's run, you know, what officers run what and how things work. It does, But it doesn't go into a lot of, like, pseudoscience stuff about how, ooh, nanomachines, blah, 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 and the Mass Effect fields and our nuclear reactor. Like, they don't go into all that, but they still give a pretty good rundown of the ship and what it does, what kind of weapons it has, which I thought was cool. And I can clearly tell that there was passion in here. You know, this wasn't just... Uh, scribbled out and then thrown out in an attempt to make money like it it is something that someone wrote because they wanted to write it and in that regard i i can't i can't fault them for that you know you you should be uh glad or excuse me you should be uh proud of yourself if you have the energy to do that the creativity to do that and uh you're willing to put that out there to be judged by other people so congratulations on that but that said um this really is a, a mess. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to be that blunt, but it is a mess, and it needed a lot of rewriting before you could put it out there. And especially because on on the Kindle store, it's like uh, ten dollars, I think. Like, I'm gonna be honest, it's not worth ten dollars. Like, I, I would suggest dropping the price down to like one ninety nine or something like that, because then you might actually get some people buying it. But the as it stands now, um. Congratulations on actually reading it, congratulations on getting it out there, but it's, uh, well, it's it's just not good. And so I don't know if I can really recommend this to anyone unless you're really intrigued by some sort of uh, space opera-esque thing that, that has an avant-garde style of writing. Uh, if you're interested in that, then I guess go ahead and check it out. But other than that, yeah, this, this feels kind of like a... Wattpad story, and I don't think many people would like it. A special thanks to everyone who watched this far, and a huge, huge thanks to all my $10 and up patrons, Apo Savalane and Alex Humba, Ashley Watson, B. Quinn, Brother Santodis, Christopher Quinten, Ambis, Emily Miller, Evan Stegall, Joel, Karkat Kitsune, Madison Lewis Bennett, Mike, NB Star, Tobacco Crow, Tom Beanie, Topher Wheeler, Vacuous Silas, and Vevictus. Them and all the other names you see here, they are, they're pretty cool. And if you're not on here, you should consider giving me some money so that you can get on here. And if you can't, then, well, watching this far is also pretty great, so be sure to like this video, comment on it, subscribe, all that stuff I'm supposed to say here, because that makes me look, it gives me more stuff that, yeah, I'll see you later, bye.